Alfalfa is the most important forage legume grown in the U.S. It's also the most widely adapted forage legume. It is grown to some extent in all countries throughout the world. Alfalfa has one of the highest yield potentials of all perennial forage legumes. The plant is high quality, resulting in excellent animal performance. Alfalfa is the most dominant hay species being marketed in the U.S. It has established itself as the premier quality hay and is the standard for comparison. Alfalfa is a very versatile crop. It can be used for hay, haylage, green chop, grazing, and seed. Historically, alfalfa has been used dominantly as a premier hay plant. As we look to the future, its use will continue to be dominantly for hay. However, its use as a grazing crop is gaining momentum. Grazing alfalfa is a very common practice in many countries around the world. However, it historically has not been a common and consistent practice in the U.S. In the past, we've used grazing alfalfa only in certain situations. Producers have and do occasionally graze alfalfa in early November. This accumulated growth is somewhat difficult to harvest for hay, but can be grazed very successfully. Another situation where alfalfa has been used for grazing has been in the last year of production of a hay field. If the hay field has become weedy and unproductive, then grazing has worked in these situations. Grazing alfalfa also occurs in Kentucky during summer droughts. Cool season grasses become somewhat unproductive during hot, dry months. Alfalfa with its deep root system makes excellent summer growth and high quality summer pasture. Things are changing today. More and more farmers are seeding alfalfa with the sole purpose for grazing. The alfalfa grazer and the grass, I think we could, especially with cows, I think you get a much better conception rate uh, during the breeding season than you would with uh, uh, when you get into the fescue and fescue clover. Um, plus, uh, that's when uh, fescue is its, uh, at its worst and it kind of fills in the slump there. And with cows, you get a better conception and rate. And with stockers, you better get a better rate of gain. I saw alfalfa solely with the purpose of grazing it. Uh, sometimes we use a grazing type and sometimes a hay type. And I don't wait till the stands are five years old and start grazing them. We put them out specifically to graze, and I think you're gonna see more people doing that. Uh, you must remain flexible, and I think that's gonna be the key to grazing uh, any kind of, a, particularly a summer crop, but in grazing alfalfa, flexibility is a must. Well, I like to use alfalfa. Kentucky 31 is probably great for eight months of the year, but four months of the year when we have the summer problem with Kentucky 31, I like to use alfalfa just like somebody else might use a uh, annual. But, but the nice thing about alfalfa, it kind of works as an annual, but it comes back every year for several years. And when calves begin to be, say, 200 pounds, uh, boy, the, the, the mother really can't eat, any, can't eat too much or too high quality of feed. She's going to make money for you at that time. Our research indicates that alfalfa can be grazed over several years without any real problem on stand life. Uh, we've also learned that we can manage around cross fencing by using, a, uh, in, in many cases, one strand of the new poly wire. And we've learned that cattle become accustomed to this rotational grazing rather quickly. They're creatures of habit and they move easily from paddock to paddock. And we've also learned that uh, not to uh, fear grazing alfalfa because of the possibility of bloat. We can control bloat. Many times just by managing the factors that contribute to bloat or by feeding a feed additive uh, such as uh, paloxylene or uh, bloat guard in this case. So by, by putting all the factors together of good management, we can achieve high, uh, high yields from grazing alfalfa. Research summaries from throughout the U.S. has shown excellent beef, dairy, and sheep results. In addition, other animal species have been used to graze alfalfa. Principles for success with alfalfa grazing are similar to those for hay. Four basic principles should be considered. Number one, establish to get a good stand. Number two, produce for high yields. Number three, harvest for high quality, and number four, market for profit. The first requirement for grazing is to get a good stand. The important principles 
are the soil type, soil test, seeding dates, seeding rates, seeding time, seed bed preparation, and variety selection. When you talk about selecting a variety of alfalfa and you know it's going to be used in, in a grazing scheme, even if it's dual purpose or even if it's primarily for grazing, I think we still have to go back to the basics that, that we have promoted for selecting that variety over time. And that has been, uh, number one, adaptation to Kentucky, and you measure that by how it's yielded across uh, the many sites that we've got in our yield, our clip and weigh yield trials. You also need to look at the disease resistance profile. What sort of resistance levels do you have for Phytophthora root rot, uh, anthracnose, bacterial wilt, and fusarium wilt? And as a minimum, we, ex we uh, recommend an MR or a moderately resistant uh, disease rating for these pests or these diseases. When you add the grazing component as a variable, then you've, then you've got to, to look at some things that are a little bit harder to come by. Uh, I think you've got to look at how the variety was selected. Uh, was it selected under clipping or was it selected under actual animal grazing pressure? Uh, the first generation of grazing type selected under grazing pressure, uh, the alpha graze product, uh, those were well documented and, and selected under grazing. Uh, but I think we're going to see uh, very shortly uh, a proliferation of types promoted as grazing types uh, with uh, some uh, varying degrees of selection under grazing animals. And I think that's a crucial and a key part of variety selection for when grazing tolerance is uh, a part of what you're, what you're buying into with that variety. An important requirement for grazing is to have adequate subdivisions to permit rotational grazing. We try to start when alfalfa is about 10 inches tall, and this is whether it's in April or, or whenever, uh, July or August. Uh, if you don't start early, by the time you spend two or three days in each paddock and you advance 30 days, uh, the uh, latest alfalfa will be way too mature. So we start early. Uh, we try to graze uh, less than five days, sometimes just two or three, depending on the season. Uh, all of our systems are based around a minimum of eight paddocks. and. Uh, I sort of came about that. It seems like if four days is a, is a good uniform number, you stay on it, have eight paddocks, that's 32 days, and you're back around to start again.